This boy's name is Agu, he lives happily with his parents in a small village enforced by the government's military. During the time of a raging civil war, the government must find a way to fight off rebel soldiers and protect their people from the cruel of hands of this people. Welcome back to my channel, in today's video I will go through a war drama called, Beast of No Nation. Let's dive straight into the story. Sit back, relax and be entertained. The movie opens up with group of children playing around a field, Agu and his friends watched the kids as they stood from a distance with a broken TV they call Imagination TV. Agu then narrates that his country is at war, and they no longer went to school again, so they needed to do something to keep them busy. Later on Agu and his friends tried to sell the Imagination TV to a policeman, they performed different acts but the man wasn't interested as he sends them away. Agu goes on to narrate that they live in a buffer zone where they are protected by Ikomog's troops from the raging war. Agu and his friends then take the Imagination TV to a Nigerian soldier who bought it out of kindness for 1,500 and packs of food. Back at his house, Agu reveals to us that his mother is very hardworking and the bond they share together is inseparable. His father was a teacher but he had to quit because of the war, and then used his land to shelter refugees. His big brother is more concerned about his looks. One time Agu pees on him, which made his brother playfully punish him for mischief. The movie switches to a church, where the villagers do come for worship, they danced as the choir gave them wonderful songs to uplift their spirits. In the next scene, we could see Agu and his friends using a barricade to stop moving vehicles, they collect little money from the drivers, while working they met an old woman who accused and insulted them saying they stole her land to give it out to refugees, she cursed them as she left. Later that night, Agu and his brother question their father about the old woman during a meal, he replies saying she isn't saying the truth and they shouldn't pay attention to her. They ate their meal playfully as they all had a good laugh. After they had finished eating, Agu's father noticed that his television had been damaged, he then demands to know who the culprit is. A guilty Agu takes to his heels to escape his father's punishment. That night he slept inside a dark room to escape his furious dad. The next day while Agu and his brother were fetching water, his brother reminded him of how much their father loved him, after which Agu tells him that the girl he has a crush is passing by. Agu's brother then began flexing his muscles so he could attract the girl to him. Later on, the Ikomog entered the village with their tank armored vehicles, they held a meeting at the town hall, saying everyone had to leave the village because the rebels are coming, but the village chief tells them that they can't leave the village because it is their ancestors' home. The meeting ended with an argument as they all agreed to protect their village. Later that night, Agu's father tells his mother that she has to take Agu and their little daughter to the city as the village isn't safe for now, this resulted to an argument as she wanted the whole family to leave for the city together. Agu who was listening to their conversation, is then interrupted by his brother who tells him not to bother about anything, he continues by saying they should continue their game. The next day, Agu's father takes them to a bus park, the park was crowded because a lot of people wanted to leave the village for city. During a rush hour, Agu's father managed to board Agu's mother and his little sister, the bus driver wouldn't let Agu get in the vehicle as he requested for higher pay, as the bus left, Agu chases after it because he knew he was going to miss his mom, his brother then comes over to reassure him that everything is going to be fine. Agu then narrates that this is how his story started, in the next scene we could see Agu running with his father and brother, there were rapid gunfire in the air as villagers hid in fear. The soldiers shot at them as they all fled for safety, Agu and his family with some other villagers then hide themselves in a dark room in a bid to escape from the ruthless soldiers. They were all terrified as their lives could be taken at any moment, one of them then tried to run away from the dark room but they warned him against it, after the Malayari shot at their hiding place, the villager ran out of the room hereby exposing all of them. The villager was shot as all of them were captured, they were tied and brought to their knees, the captain then introduced the group as the National Reformation Council, NRC. He accused Agu and the villagers of being rebels. Agu's father tried to explain that they are just villagers and have nothing to do with the rebels. The captain then brings in the bittered old woman to confirm their identity but she claims she has never seen them before and they were rebels. Agu's father tried to heg saying the woman has mental issues but the captain wouldn't listen as he commands his men to execute them. They were all executed alongside Agu's father, but Agu and his brother managed to escape from the execution ground. The military chases after them, they shot Agu's older brother in the most brutal way but Agu is able to evade them as he runs into the forest, he wandered inside the forest looking for help as his village was already torn apart. A devastated Agu then finds an abandoned hut, he goes inside it to look for food but all to no avail, he tried putting on a fire but it didn't work, Agu who had become very hungry in the jungle then resulted in eating green leaves which eventually made him throw up. Suddenly he sees someone in a masquerade costume. 
He tries to go after him but then lost track of him. Agu continues to wander in the forest until he got caught up in a battle between rebels. He is knocked out and then captured by some group of child soldiers. He is brought before the supreme commandant of the group. The group who were rebels, refers to themselves as the native defense forces. The commandant then calls Strika one of the child soldiers, he commends him for capturing Agu. He calls on another teenage soldier called 2IC. He tells Tuik that Agu isn't just a boy, because a boy is harmless and nothing. He tells Tuik that Agu is hands that can strangle enemies and fingers that could pull triggers which makes him a dangerous person. The commandant then asked Agu what he was doing so far away from his village, Agu replies saying the government military had killed his father and older brother, hence he had to flee inside the forest. Commandant then introduced himself as the superior over the group, the group was made up of child soldiers and teenagers who were out to seek revenge on the government, every child and teenager in the group were fierce looking as they had been giving hardcore trainings, turning their heart to stones. Commandant then volunteered to train Agu under his wings, he tells Agu that he will train him to be a warrior so he would eventually get his revenge on the government that killed his father. He was then asked to carry the ammunition box with other young recruits as they proceeded to their base. When they got there they began gyrating as they praised commandant their leader. Tuik then introduced the new recruit to the group, he tells them that they are under the control of the NDF, so if they are willing to stay they have to be initiated. Tuik then hands over Agu to a teenage soldier for intense training. While the group were eating, a hungry Agu then asked for food, this made another boy soldier called Preacher angry, he tells Agu that he is not a soldier yet, he then punished him, while Agu was serving his punishment, the commandant called on strike of the boy soldier, B quickly rushes to go meet the commandant inside his hut which looks so suspicious. In the next scene, the new recruits are trained on how to move and carry a gun, Tuik then feeds them a propaganda on the evil doings of the government and what the vision of the rebel group was all about. Later on, the group decides to have fun by playing football. The game ended after a fight ensues between two members. Commandant then motivates the group on why they should fight for their freedom and rights, he tells them that they have been defending themselves and now they needed to take revenge on the ruthless government. He assures them that they are his family and they will surely win the war. This charismatic speech then motivates Agu and hyped up everyone. Agu and the new recruits then proceed to their initiation, they were cut with sharp knives, beating brutally with sticks, incensed on burning woods and placed inside shallow graves. After the initiation was over, Agu was among the lucky ones to have made it through the initiation process, they are then shot at but the rifle had no effect on them. Commandant then tells the new initiated soldiers that the spirits has blessed them and made them invincibles to the enemies, he taps them aggressively as they all danced in duration. The next day, Commandant addresses the group, he tells them to prepare their things for they would be leaving the base and they shouldn't leave anything for the enemy. That night they burnt their camp as they left on foot. During a call, Commandant speaks with his superior, we can see him pledging his allegiance and giving reports on their every journey. The rebel soldiers then proceeds to ambush the government military as they camped in a nearby bridge, as they await the military, Agu watched as the child soldiers engaged themselves in smoking ganja and taking gunpowders. As the enemies approached with their convoy, the child soldiers attacked them with RPG and assault rifles, killing everyone in the battle, although a survivor was left and brought to the commandant. The survivor tried to plea for his life saying he was just a construction worker and not a soldier but commandant didn't want to entertain his plea, he summons Agu and then tells him that today he is going to prove himself as a soldier, he tells Agu to kill the survivor with a machete, Agu couldn't bring himself to do this bloody task as he has never taken a life before, the survivor made it worse by pleading for his life. Commandant then tells Agu that he is among the people that killed his father and he shouldn't hesitate to kill the man. A bittered Agu then strikes the man's skull with a machete as Strika one of the child soldiers joined in to help finish up the man. This resulted to a bloody massacre. Tuik then hands Agu an assault rifle, he tells him not to lose the weapon but Agu throws up in disgust. As they were driving, Agu sparks a conversation with Strika, but they realize that he couldn't talk as he only used gestures to reply, the two boys then became very close as they started a friendship. After they had returned back to camp, Commandant tells the group on what they would experience if they go to the city, he tells them that there are lots of foods and abundant resources. He goes on to talk about their beautiful women which made the child soldiers burst into laughter. As the soldiers were enjoying the moment, a woman was brought in, she tells Commandant that she is a refugee and the government military had taken over their village killing everyone in the process. The Commandant then agreed to help them reclaim their village. The next day, the Commandant and the rebel group goes over to the village which is under heavy fire. Commandant then radios 2IC who is already in the battleground. Tuik requests for support saying they can't hold on much longer and some of the men were injured. 
Commandant then used his binoculars to see the ongoing war. He calls Agu and Stryka, with the intention of showing them how to use the binoculars but he ended up only showing it to Agu, this made Stryka hurt. He summons his soldiers, saying he is going to take only the strong-hearted, they go through the village as they massacred the enemy soldiers, gyrating and rejoicing at their victory. Later that night while the child soldiers were searching the dead soldiers, Agu finds something in the pocket of a soldier and then brings it to the commandant. The commandant tells Agu that he reminds him of when he was little and Agu has the qualities of a good leader. He tells Agu that he wants to make him his friend. He invites Agu to his room gave him a special cap and then rapes him. Agu comes out of the room hurt, with pain in his heart, Stryker who understands what had happened rushes over to him and then consoles him. The next day, Preacher noticed Agu's mood and then offered him a moral booster. Agu who was in shock from what happened last night quickly accepted the gunpowder and immediately became high and began to hallucinate. Commandant briefs the group on the next mission, he orders that everyone be killed and nobody should be spared in the next city they will raid. During the mission, Agu brutally killed a lot of people without remorse as he had accepted the life he got to live. During a raid, while the boys were trying to rape a woman, a bittered Agu shot her dead. Commandant then received a letter from the NDF leader, Dada good blood, he had summoned Commandant to the rebels headquarter. When they got there, he tells Commandant that the war is now a public image and barbaric acts won't be tolerated since the war is now a world news. Instead of keeping to his promise of promoting Commandant to the rank of general, he removes him from command and then places Tuik as the new commander. Commandant who considered it an insult to the legacy he had built and influence he has on the child soldiers then swallowed his anger and then invites Tuik for a party. While having a drink together they decide to spend the night with prostitutes, Tuik was shot dead by one of the prostitutes. Commandant blames them for killing Tuik, but Tuik accuses Commandant of orchestrating the murder. Commandant then shoots all the prostitutes as they depart with Tuik's body. Commandant then starts a revolution against his own faction. While they were on the run from the NDF, they are faced with numerous airstrike and gun battles which they can't win because they were without supplies. One time, Agu finds out that Stryka had been shot, so he goes over to rescue him, he carries him on his back, but before they would get to their destination, Stryka gave up the ghost. This left Agu devastated. The group had gone to camp in a place where they would mine gold, but all to no avail. The situation became critical as the rebel soldiers continued to die as a result of low resources. Preacher couldn't bear this any longer and then tells Commandant that he and the soldiers wants to leave for good. Commandant warns them that they were going to be considered worthless and thrown to jail, they still insisted on leaving, as they proceeded to the UN troops, they surrendered to the military. They were thoroughly searched, after the search was over, they transferred the little boys to a safe house in the country, where they will begin a new life. A preacher and another child soldier who couldn't cope with the life then decides to escape. Argue continued with his counselor and is able to fight off his nightmares. The end. If you love this video, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell.